Good evening and welcome to UTV Live. A 16-year-old boy has been charged in connection with an attack on a man in Oma which has left him critically ill in hospital. The 21-year-old victim was assaulted in Scarf's entry during the early hours of yesterday morning. He's being treated at the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast. The 16-year-old charged is accused of grievous bodily harm and is due in court later this week. A 17-year-old has been shot in West Belfast. He was attacked in a house at West Rock Park in the White Rock Road area sometime before 9 o'clock this morning. The victim was rushed to hospital where he's being treated for gunshot wounds to his legs. A Nigerian man has been awarded thousands of pounds compensation for racial discrimination after being accused of drinking his own beer in a Belfast bar. The Equality Commission says the case provides important lessons to any organisation offering services to the public. Paul Crummy has the details. Julius Anaka, who's lived in Belfast for 13 years, had been to the Empire Bar in Botanic Avenue in the city many times before. He didn't encounter any problems until one day in May 2007. He sat with friends in the bar's beer garden and was soon accused by staff of drinking beer from a carryout. I I was shocked and I felt humiliated because uh, he made his utterances were very loud so that everyone could hear. Initially we thought uh, the, the bar staff was coming to ask us if we needed more drinks. Uh, uh, but uh, when he started uh, the barrage of our allegation I was absolutely shocked and I felt embarrassed and humiliated. The fact that uh, lots of the people in the, in the beer garden were aware of this at, at the time. Um, I, I felt really humiliated. Julius received a letter from Wine Inns Limited about the incident. That letter was later described by a district judge as a tirade of bald denial and threats. The Equality Commission brought the case to court where it was ruled that his treatment at the bar was all down to his race. The heavy-handed way in which the matter was dealt with uh, was found to be a further victimisation of Julius and so I think the message would be to ensure that service profession uh, does not discriminate against people and that when customers make complaints around the service provision uh, that that is appropriately and adequately investigated. The court also issued an injunction which will prevent the company from subjecting Julius to any further unlawful discrimination if he decides to go to the bar again. The Equality Commission says the case sends a clear message that racism in all its forms is wrong and must be challenged. Paul Crummy, UTV Live. Counting of votes cast in the European election here will get underway tomorrow. Early tally indications suggest that the DUP has suffered at the hands of the TUV's Jim Allister. It's been predicted that Sinn Féin will top the poll. The full results will not be known until tomorrow afternoon. Well, sport now and in GAA, Antrim's hurlers fell to a heavy defeat in their opening Leinster Championship game, losing 2-16 to 12 points against Dublin at Croke Park. Meanwhile, there was disappointment for Fermanagh's footballers yesterday as they suffered a one-point defeat to Cavan in the Ulster Championship. Colin McAlinden reports. Fermanagh were highly fancied going into the game, but it was Cavan who signalled their intentions early on. Shawnee Johnson firing over for the opening score of the game. Johnson had put his side two up before Fermanagh got themselves on the scoreboard, courtesy of a goal from Eamon Maguire, who got on the end of a quick free to punch home past the Cavan keeper. Cavan pulled one back before Kean Mackey's point put the Breffney side back in front. The sides continued to exchange scores. Ryan McCluskey had the final say of the half for Fermanagh, with this great point to leave the halftime score 1 4 to 8 points in Cavan's favour. The home side extended their lead to four points within seven minutes of the restart, though, with Fermanagh struggling to keep in touch. Their lack of free takers was also taking its toll with a number of missed chances. The Ironmen did stage a fight back to bring the game back to within a point, but a fabulous late score from Johnson was enough to seal victory for Cavan. Malachy O'Rourke's side were left to rue missed chances. Tommy Carr delighted to see his side progress through a tough encounter. I think every game up in Ulster seems to be a dog of battle. You're not going to get out playing brilliant football or beautiful football all the time. I think if you're prepared to dog it out and you're prepared to battle it, you have a good chance. Uh, we stayed in it until the end, uh, even though it got quite tight at the end. 
but uh, delighted for the fellas. I thought they put in a massive 72 or three minutes out there. Meanwhile, at Park Esler, Down reached the final of the Christie Ring Cup, with a second half goal fest eventually putting pay to the challenge of Mayo. After Paul Braniff's effort early in the second half, James Coyle and Owen Clark also found the net to give Down a commanding lead. Gareth Johnson's delicate finish just before the end was the icing on the cake. Final score 421 to 14 points. Well, Mark Allen has won his first professional snooker title. The Antrim man defeated Ding Jung Wee by six frames to nil in the final of the International Classic Tournament, which was held in China today. Now on to football. Northern Ireland's under-strength squad came home from Italy with their pride intact after losing by three goals to nil in last night's friendly international in Pisa. John Flack reports. The world champions also fielded a relatively inexperienced side, but they took control from the start. Italy took the lead in the 20th minute, former Man United player Giuseppe Rossi firing them in front in superb fashion. No chance for Northern Ireland keeper Jonathan Tuffy. Nigel Worthington's side had very few chances, although Rangers player Andrew Little did have a shot on target shortly after the break. But it was Italy who got goal number two, another excellently worked effort, Rossi putting Pascali Foggia through and he finished superbly. The Italians were awarded a penalty shortly afterwards, but Tuffy pushed Gianpaolo Pazzini's effort to safety. But it wasn't long before Italy got their third goal, Sergio Palessier with an excellent turn and shot, as Crusaders defender Colin Coates could only stand and watch in admiration. Linfield's out-of-contract goalkeeper Alan Manis came on for Tuffy and he kept a clean sheet after denying Felicia his second goal of the night. 3-0 finished. Well, the Republic of Ireland's chances of qualifying for next year's World Cup finals in South Africa are still very much alive after a one-all draw with Bulgaria and Sofia last night. Manchester City defender Richard Dunn put Giovanni Trapattoni's side in front in the 24th minute when he was given a free header. But a defensive mistake at the other end of the pitch let Bulgaria in for the equaliser eight minutes later. Dimitar Telkaisky beating the Republic's goalkeeper Shea Given. The new Queen's Park Rangers manager, former Northern Ireland player Jim Magilton, says he's looking forward to the job after being sacked from Ipswich Town towards the end of last season. I spent 10 great years at Ipswich and had a fantastic time, but you know, I'm not someone that dwells in the past and I'm really, really looking forward to the challenge. QPR are a club steeped in you know, the fine traditions of the game and uh, I'm relishing that opportunity. I welcome the opportunity and I you know, can't wait to get started. But I want to make sure that the foundations are in place so anything higher than 11th will be a step forward and uh, certainly I think they've got uh, all the credentials. Uh, whether or not we can do that, it won't be for the want of trying. Here's Rollins now for Rangers. Oh, it's a beauty! Yeah. Martin Rollins breaks the deadlock with an unstoppable shot. He got it up and down so quickly, cut across it. Wonderful hit. Marvellous looping, dipping shot from the QPR captain. They've got a very talented squad of players. I think if you again in football, if you can get a little bit of momentum, get a little bit of confidence in the squad, get off to a good start, anything is possible. So, you know, that'll be my aim. Well, that's the UTV News and Sport. Now this week's crime brief. Here's Paul Clark. That's the latest from the UTV News Centre. There'll be updates throughout the night on U105 and at U.TV. The weather is next, but from all of us here in the studio, have a very good evening.